Yaris's claws gripped the railing as his ship entered hyperspace towards Zelos Prime. He wondered if the humans would finally break the mighty resolve of the militant Kazon Empire. He realized the futility of facing a species that kept fighting even when their expeditionary force was supposedly wiped out. For decades, the reptilian Kazon had been locked in a bitter conflict with the neighboring Velara. Yaris, a seasoned general respected by his troops, oversaw a routine training exercise on the Kazon homeworld, Kazoria. He towered at seven feet tall, his dark green scales glistening under the harsh sun, and his piercing yellow eyes surveyed the battlefield with cold precision. An urgent message interrupted the exercise. A small group of human soldiers, led by Captain Gary Carter, had been discovered on Zelos Prime, a contested planet. The humans were thought to have been eliminated in a previous battle, but their resilience surprised the Kazon. Yaris ordered his flagship, the KSS Dominion, to set course for Zelos Prime. As the ship prepared for the jump, he reviewed the limited intelligence on the humans. Their technology and physiology seemed primitive compared to the Kazon, but Yaris couldn't shake a feeling of unease. If the humans managed to survive and regroup on Zelos Prime, they could inspire resistance among the subjugated populations. The Kazon Empire's grip on the sector would be threatened, and their resources stretched thin. Yaris knew he had to crush the humans swiftly and decisively, or risk the unravelling of everything the Kazon had fought for. As the KSS Dominion hurtled through hyperspace, Yaris steeled himself for the confrontation that would determine the fate of his empire. He wondered what kind of warriors these humans were to have endured so much and yet still stand defiant against the might of the Kazon. The KSS Dominion shuddered as it dropped out of hyperspace, the massive warship's armor gleaming under the light of Zelos Prime's twin suns. Yaris narrowed his eyes as he saw the tiny human vessel waiting for them, engines flaring defiantly. Sir, we're being hailed by the human ship. They identify themselves as the UESS Odyssey, Yaris's comms officer reported. The viewscreen flickered to life, revealing a human male with close-cropped brown hair and eyes the color of Kazoria's sky. This is Captain Gary Carter of the UESS Odyssey. Kazon vessel, power down your weapons and prepare to be boarded. You are hereby ordered to surrender. Yaris let out a hissing laugh, his scaled lips pulling back to reveal razor-sharp teeth. You dare to challenge the might of the Kazon Empire, human? I will enjoy watching your primitive ship burn. He turned to his weapons officer. Open fire. Tear them apart. The Dominion's forward batteries unleashed a storm of plasma bolts, the deadly energy arcing towards the Odyssey. But to Yaris's disbelief, the human ship rolled and wove through the barrage with impossible grace, its movements fluid and precise. Bright lances of blue-white light erupted from the Odyssey's cannons, slicing through the Dominion shields as if they were paper. The deck shuddered beneath Yaris's clawed feet as explosions blossomed across the Kazon ship's hull. Shields down to 20%, engines are offline, weapons are non-responsive. Yaris's tactical officer shouted, panic creeping into his voice. Before Yaris could react, five armoured figures materialised on the bridge in a burst of shimmering light. The humans moved with blinding speed, their strange weapons spitting bolts of crackling energy that dropped Kazon crew members where they stood. Yaris reached for his sidearm but a gauntleted hand clamped down on his wrist with crushing force. He found himself staring into the impassive faceplate of Captain Carter's helmet. Stand down, General. Your ship is crippled and your crew is subdued. It's over, Carter said, his voice distorted by his helmet's speakers. Yaris felt a cold knot of dread settle in his stomach as he realized the true extent of the human's power. With a terse nod, he let his weapon fall from his grasp. I... surrender. We will negotiate. Carter removed his helmet, revealing a face etched with hard-won experience. He regarded Yaris with a mixture of respect and determination. Wise choice, General. Let's talk. As Yaris watched Carter address his subordinates, he couldn't help but marvel at the human's poise and the easy camaraderie he shared with his soldiers. For the first time in his long military career, 
Yaris began to question the rigid hierarchy and unrelenting aggression that defined Kazan society. As Yaris and Carter sat across from each other in the Dominion's conference room, the human captain began to share more about his people. The United Earth Alliance, which I represent, is just one of several factions on Earth, Carter explained, his hands clasped on the table. We seek peaceful cooperation with other species, but not all humans share our goals. Yaris leaned forward, his yellow eyes narrowing. What do you mean? Are you not a unified species? Carter shook his head. No, we're quite diverse. Some factions, like the Terran Dominion, are more aggressive. They prioritize expanding human territory and exploiting alien resources. The revelation struck Yaris like a plasma bolt. The Kazon's limited intelligence had portrayed humans as primitive and homogeneous, but the reality was far more complex. I see, Yaris said, his claws tapping the table thoughtfully. We have much to learn about your kind. Suddenly the ship shuddered as alarms blared throughout the vessel. Yaris and Carter rushed to the bridge, where a Kazon officer reported, General, a fleet of unknown human ships has dropped out of hyperspace. They're firing on us. On the viewscreen, a dozen sleek angular vessels bore down on the crippled Dominion, their weapons leaving trails of destruction across the ship's hull. Carter's eyes widened in recognition. It's the Terran Dominion, he said grimly. They must have intercepted our distress call and come for your advanced technology. Yaris growled, realizing the gravity of the situation. We must join forces to repel this attack. My crew will follow your lead, Captain. Carter nodded, already formulating a plan. We'll need to combine our strengths. Your knowledge of the terrain and our tactical expertise should give us an edge. As the unlikely allies worked together, Yaris couldn't help but marvel at the humans' bravery and adaptability. Carter's team coordinated with the Kazon crew seamlessly, their advanced armor absorbing enemy fire as they returned shots with pinpoint accuracy. The battle raged on, the Dominion's hull buckling under the onslaught. Yaris watched as a human soldier, his armor scorched and battered, threw himself in front of a Kazon engineer, shielding him from a blast of plasma. The selfless act left Yaris stunned, his preconceptions about humans crumbling with each passing moment. Carter's voice crackled over the comm. General, we've identified a weakness in their formation. If we hit these coordinates with a concentrated barrage, we might be able to break through and flank them. Yaris studied the tactical display, his mind racing. The human's plan was risky, but it could work. Do it, he said, his voice steady. We'll give you all the support we can. As the Dominion and Odyssey launched their coordinated assault, Yaris felt a newfound respect for these humans, who fought so fiercely, not just for their own lives, but for the lives of the Kazon as well. The battle still hung in the balance, but one thing was clear. The humans were far more than the primitive species Yaris had once believed them to be. They were a force to be reckoned with, and perhaps, if circumstances were different, a valuable ally against the threats that lurked in the depths of space. The acrid stench of burnt metal and ozone hung heavy in the air as Yaris and Carter surveyed the smouldering wreckage of the Terran Dominion fleet. The Odyssey's hull was scarred and battered, a testament to the ferocity of the battle, but she still held together a shining beacon of human resilience. Yaris turned to Carter, his yellow eyes glinting with newfound respect. Your tactics were impressive, Captain. I must admit, I underestimated your species. Carter nodded, his face etched with exhaustion and grim satisfaction. We couldn't have done it without your crew's support, General. This battle has shown me that our peoples have more in common than I initially believed. The two leaders clasped forearms, a gesture of mutual respect and understanding. Perhaps it is time for a new era of cooperation between the Kazon and the United Earth Alliance, Yaris said, his deep voice resonating with conviction. I agree, Carter replied. We should take this opportunity to forge a lasting alliance, one that benefits both our peoples. Yaris turned to his trusted lieutenant, Vektar, a lean Kazon with a web of faded scars across his scales. Vektar, I am entrusting you with the command of the Dominion. 
continue negotiations with the local human forces on Zelos Prime. Show them the same respect and understanding that Captain Carter has shown us. Vectar saluted sharply, his eyes gleaming with pride. I will not fail you, General. With that, Yaris and Carter boarded the Odyssey, setting course for Earth. As the sleek human ship slipped into hyperspace, Yaris found himself in the observation deck, gazing out at the swirling vortex of light and color. Carter joined him, offering a steaming mug of a dark, bitter liquid the humans called coffee. Yaris accepted it gratefully, the warmth seeping into his clawed hands. "'Tell me about your world, Captain,' Yaris said, his gaze still fixed on the mesmerizing dance of hyperspace. Carter took a sip of his own coffee, his eyes distant with memory. Earth is a place of incredible diversity, General. Hundreds of nations, thousands of cultures, all with their own unique histories and traditions. It hasn't always been easy, bringing them together under a common cause. The human shared stories of Earth's tumultuous past, of wars and conflicts that had nearly torn the planet apart, and of the visionaries who had worked tirelessly to unite humanity. Yaris listened intently, drawing parallels to his own people's history. The Kazan were once a nomadic species, Yaris said, his voice low and contemplative. We valued strength above all else, believing that only through conquest could we secure our place in the galaxy. But as the centuries passed, we found ourselves struggling to adapt to a changing universe. The two leaders talked for hours, sharing their hopes and fears, their triumphs and regrets. As they spoke, Yaris felt a growing sense of kinship with the human captain, a realization that their species had more in common than he had ever imagined. Days later, the Odyssey emerged from hyperspace, the brilliant blue-green orb of Earth filling the viewscreen. Yaris stood on the bridge, his eyes wide with wonder as he took in the sight of the human homeworld. The ship descended through the atmosphere, the sky shifting from inky black to a brilliant azure. As they approached the landing pad, Yaris saw a welcoming party waiting for them, a sea of uniforms and faces representing the myriad nations and cultures of Earth. At the center of the group stood a tall, slender woman with silver-streaked hair and piercing green eyes, President Amanda Novak, leader of the United Earth Alliance. Yaris and Carter disembarked from the Odyssey, the human captain leading the way as they approached the president. Novak stepped forward, her hand outstretched in greeting. General Yaris, on behalf of the United Earth Alliance, I welcome you to Earth, she said, her voice warm and sincere. Your presence here represents a historic opportunity for our peoples to forge a lasting peace. Yaris took her hand, marveling at the delicate strength of her grip. Thank you, President Novak. I come with an open heart and a desire to learn from your people. As they made their way through the crowd, Yaris couldn't help but notice the mix of emotions on the faces around him. Some looked upon him with curiosity and wonder, while others regarded him with suspicion and even hostility. He knew that earning the trust of the human leaders would not be easy, that he would have to navigate a complex web of politics and prejudice. But as he glanced at Carter, seeing the determination and support in the captain's eyes, Yaris knew that he was not alone in this endeavor. Together, they would work to build a bridge between their peoples, to forge an alliance that could withstand the challenges of an ever-changing galaxy. Yaris felt a surge of hope and purpose, a determination to prove that the Kazon and the humans could be more than just uneasy allies, they could be friends. During his time on Earth, Yaris found himself immersed in a world of technological wonders. President Novak arranged for him to tour the UEA's most advanced facilities, offering a glimpse into the cutting-edge research that had propelled humanity to the stars. At the UEA's state-of-the-art research center, Yaris walked through gleaming corridors lined with transparent walls, revealing laboratories bustling with activity. Scientists in crisp white coats worked diligently, their faces illuminated by the glow of holographic displays and the sparks of experimental energy sources. Dr. Evelyn Saunders, a brilliant physicist with fiery red hair and piercing green eyes, greeted Yaris with a warm smile. General, welcome to the heart of our scientific endeavors. Here, 
we push the boundaries of what's possible. She led him through the labs, explaining the intricacies of their work. Yaris marveled at the advanced propulsion systems capable of bending space-time and traversing vast distances in mere heartbeats. He witnessed the creation of artificial intelligence, their neural networks woven with quantum precision, designed to augment and enhance human capabilities in ways he had never imagined. Your progress is astounding, Yaris said, his voice filled with genuine admiration. The Kazon have much to learn from your ingenuity. Dr. Saunders beamed with pride. Our success stems from collaboration and the pursuit of knowledge for the betterment of all. We believe that science should serve to unite, not divide. As the tour continued, Yaris found himself at the UEA's military training facility. Here soldiers underwent grueling physical and mental conditioning, their bodies honed to peak performance and their minds sharpened to razor-keen edges. Captain Carter greeted him on the training grounds, his face etched with the hard-won wisdom of a seasoned warrior. General, I thought you might appreciate seeing how we prepare our troops for the rigours of interstellar conflict. Yaris watched as the soldiers engaged in simulated battles, their movements fluid and precise, their weapons discharging bolts of searing energy. He recognised the same adaptability and ingenuity he had witnessed in the research labs, applied to the art of war. Your soldiers are formidable, Yaris said, his eyes tracking the dance of combat. Their strength lies not only in their technology, but in their spirit and unity. Carter nodded, a glimmer of pride in his eyes. We fight not just for ourselves, but for the ideals we hold dear. It's what sets us apart from those who seek power for its own sake. As the days passed, Yaris found himself forming deeper connections with the humans he encountered. He shared meals with diplomats and scientists, exchanging stories of their respective worlds and the challenges they faced. One evening, Carter invited Yaris to his family home, a modest dwelling on the outskirts of the city. There he met Michael, Carter's younger brother, a brilliant engineer with a quick wit and an infectious enthusiasm for all things mechanical. Michael's eyes lit up when he learned of Yaris's interest in weapons technology. You know, I've been working on some designs that could revolutionize energy weapons. I'd love to get your input. Yaris, intrigued by the young man's passion, agreed to collaborate. They spent long hours in Michael's workshop, poring over schematics and prototypes, combining Kazon and human knowledge to create something truly remarkable. This could change everything, Michael said, his face aglow with excitement as they tested the improved weapon. A testament to what our people can achieve together. Yaris felt a swell of pride and hope, seeing in their creation a symbol of the alliance he had worked so hard to forge. But even as they celebrated their success, the spectre of war loomed on the horizon. General Volkov, a hardened veteran of the Terran Dominion, saw the budding alliance as a threat to human supremacy. Under the cover of night, Volkov's forces launched a surprise attack on the UEA Research Center, seeking to steal the very technologies that promised to unite their peoples. Alarms blared as Yaris and Carter raced through the halls, the acrid scent of smoke and ozone heavy in the air. They emerged onto a battlefield, the once pristine laboratories transformed into a war zone. Volkov's soldiers, clad in obsidian armor and wielding weapons of terrible power, clashed with the UEA's defenses. Energy bolts crisscrossed the air, searing flesh and melting metal. Yaris and Carter moved as one, their training and instincts guiding them through the chaos. They rallied the UEA forces, directing the defense and striking at the heart of the enemy advance. We can't let them take the research, Carter shouted over the din of battle, his face streaked with sweat and grime. If they get their hands on our technology, they'll use it to enslave the galaxy. Yaris nodded, his eyes hard with determination. He knew that the fate of not just the Kazon, but countless other species, hung in the balance. Together they pushed forward, their weapons blazing, their resolve unbreakable. They fought not just for their own lives, but for the future they had dared to dream of, a future of peace, understanding and unity.
As the battle raged around them, Yaris and Carter stood shoulder to shoulder, a human and a Kazan, united by a bond forged in the crucible of war. They would stand against the darkness, no matter the cost, to protect the fragile hope they had kindled between their peoples. Plasma fire seared the air as Yaris and Michael fought back to back, defending the critical research lab from Volkov's relentless assault. The Dominion soldiers pressed forward, their obsidian armor glinting under the harsh emergency lighting. Cover me, Michael shouted, ducking behind a shattered console to reload his weapon. Yaris nodded, his claws tightening around the grip of his plasma rifle as he laid down a suppressing fire. A Dominion soldier, his face obscured by a menacing helmet, charged at Michael, a crackling energy blade in hand. Michael spun to face the attacker, but the soldier was too fast. The blade sliced through Michael's armor, drawing a cry of pain from the young engineer. Yaris roared in fury, launching himself at the Dominion soldier. They clashed in a flurry of claws and steel, the Kazon general's raw strength pitted against the soldier's augmented reflexes. With a final desperate surge of effort, Yaris drove his claws into the soldier's neck, piercing the weak point in his armor. The soldier crumpled to the ground, his life extinguished in a spray of crimson. Yaris rushed to Michael's side, his heart pounding as he saw the extent of the human's injuries. The energy blade had carved a deep gash across Michael's chest, and blood pooled beneath him at an alarming rate. Drawing upon the medical knowledge he had gained during his time on Earth, Yaris worked quickly to stabilize Michael. He applied pressure to the wound, using a strip of fabric torn from his own uniform to stem the bleeding. Stay with me, Michael, Yaris urged, his voice rough with emotion. Your brother needs you, Earth needs you. Michael's eyes fluttered open, his face pale but his gaze determined. We can't let them win, Yaris. The Alliance, it's our only hope. A Yaris nodded, a fierce resolve burning in his chest. He helped Michael to his feet, supporting the injured human as they made their way back to the main group. In the aftermath of the attack, Yaris and Carter met with UEA leadership to devise a plan to counter the Dominion's aggression. The room was tense with the weight of recent events, but a newfound sense of unity bound the humans and the Kazon together. We must create a joint task force, Yaris proposed, his voice steady and sure. Combining the strengths of our peoples is the only way to protect our shared interests and bring stability to the region. Carter nodded in agreement. Yaris's unique understanding of both Kazon and human culture makes him the ideal candidate to lead the Kazon contingent. President Novak studied the two warriors, her green eyes sharp with calculation. Very well, she said at last. We will move forward with the joint task force, but know that the path ahead will not be easy. The Alliance will face challenges from both within and without. As news of the human Kazon Alliance spread across the galaxy, reactions were mixed. The Valara, long-suffering victims of Kazon aggression, greeted the news with skepticism and mistrust. The Kazon cannot be trusted, a Veleran diplomat said, his voice dripping with disdain. This alliance will only lead to more bloodshed. Others, like the mysterious Korax, saw the alliance as a threat to their own power. In the shadowed halls of their ruling council, whispers of sabotage and subterfuge began to circulate. Yaris and Carter knew that they would have to navigate a treacherous web of galactic politics to build trust and support for their cause. The road ahead was fraught with danger, but they were determined to see it through. Meanwhile on Kazoria, Vectar struggled to maintain order among the Kazon military leadership. The Old Guard, their power built on centuries of militaristic tradition, bristled at the idea of an alliance with the humans. Hyaris has betrayed our ways, a grizzled commander growled, his claws digging into the council table. He has forgotten what it means to be Kazon. Vectar stood firm, his voice steady as he addressed the dissenters. Yaris has not forgotten our ways. He has seen a new path forward, one that will lead our people to greatness. We must have faith in his vision. But even as he spoke, Vectar could feel the unrest growing, a simmering tension that threatened to boil over into open revolt. He knew 
that he would have to use all his diplomatic skills to keep the peace and prevent the fragile alliance from shattering before it had a chance to take root. As the Joint human Kazon Task Force launched its inaugural missions, Yaris and Carter soon found themselves facing an unexpected challenge. Intelligence reports revealed the existence of a hidden Dominion base on the remote, desolate world of Zephyrus III. Preliminary scans suggested the base was a research facility, potentially developing advanced biological weapons that could devastate both human and Kazon populations if unleashed. Yaris and Carter wasted no time in assembling a covert strike team to infiltrate the base and gather critical intelligence on the Dominion's plans. As their stealth shuttle approached the planet's surface, Yaris checked his weapons, his claws tapping against the metallic surface of his plasma rifle. Carter sat beside him, his face illuminated by the glow of a holographic map of the facility. We'll need to move fast, Carter said, his voice low and steady. If they detect our presence, they'll likely initiate a purge of the facility, destroying any evidence of their research. Yaris nodded, his yellow eyes narrowing. Agreed. We'll split into two teams. You take point and secure the main lab, while I lead a secondary unit to the command center to access their databases. The shuttle touched down in a rocky canyon a few clicks from the base, its cloaking field shimmering as the strike team disembarked. They moved swiftly and silently through the harsh, wind-swept landscape, their armor blending seamlessly with the ruddy stone and rust-colored sand. As they neared the facility, Yaris's keen senses picked up an unusual scent on the wind, a sickly sweet odor that set his scales on edge. He signaled for the team to halt, his hand raised in a closed fist. Something's not right, he growled, his eyes scanning the seemingly deserted base. Stay sharp. Suddenly a blur of movement caught Yaris's eye. A figure moving with inhuman speed leaped from the shadows of a nearby building, closing the distance between them in seconds. Yaris barely had time to raise his rifle before the attacker was upon him, a flurry of blows raining down on his armor. Yaris staggered back, his eyes widening as he took in the sight of his assailant. The Dominion soldier was unlike any he had encountered before, his body rippling with unnatural muscle, his eyes glowing with an eerie red light. The soldier let out a feral roar, his movements a blur as he struck again and again with devastating force. Carter and the others opened fire, their weapons spitting bolts of searing energy at the super-soldier, but the Dominion fighter seemed to shrug off the blasts, his skin regenerating almost as quickly as it was damaged. More soldiers emerged from the base, each one a towering, genetically enhanced monstrosity, their faces twisted into masks of rage. Fall back! Carter shouted, his voice barely audible over the din of battle. We need to regroup! Yaris and the others fought their way through the onslaught, their weapons seemingly useless against the Dominion's new breed of warrior. They took shelter in a nearby ravine, their chests heaving as they tried to catch their breath. What the hell are those things? Yaris asked, his voice ragged with exertion. Super soldiers, Carter replied grimly. Genetically engineered killing machines, I'd heard rumors of the Dominion's experiments, but I never imagined they'd come this far. Yaris's mind raced as he considered their options. They were outmatched and outgunned, facing an enemy that seemed all but invincible. But then, a flicker of memory surfaced, a conversation with Michael back on Earth, about a new weapon he'd been developing. The Disruptor, Yaris said, his eyes widening with realization, Michael's prototype. It might be our only chance. Carter nodded, understanding dawning on his face. It's designed to target and disable genetically enhanced cells. If we can get close enough... Yaris unclipped the small cylindrical device from his belt, its surface thrumming with barely contained energy. I'll draw their attention, he said, his voice steady with resolve. You and the others get into position. With a fierce battle cry, Yaris charged from cover, firing his rifle in short, controlled bursts. The super-soldiers turned to face him, their eyes blazing with predatory hunger. Yaris ducked and weaved, his movements a blur as he dodged their blows and energy blasts. From the corner of his eye, he saw Carter and the others flanking the soldiers, their weapons trained on the hulking figures. 
Yaris lunged forward, the disruptor held high, and activated the device with a flick of his claw. A pulse of blinding white light erupted from the disruptor, washing over the super-soldiers in a wave of searing energy. The Dominion fighters staggered, their movements becoming sluggish and uncoordinated as the device disrupted their enhanced physiology. Carter and the others seized the opportunity, their weapons tearing into the weakened soldiers with relentless fury. One by one, the super-soldiers fell, their bodies crumpling to the ground in smouldering heaps. But the victory was short-lived. As the smoke cleared, Yaris saw a figure emerge from the base, a towering Dominion soldier with a face etched in cruel, angular lines. Commander Zane, the leader of the super-soldier program, regarded the strike team with a cold, calculating gaze. Impressive, Zane said, his voice a deep, sonorous rumble, but ultimately futile. You may have defeated my soldiers, but you cannot stop the inevitable march of progress. Yaris and Carter exchanged a glance, a silent understanding passing between them. They charged forward as one, their weapons blazing, determined to bring an end to Zane and his twisted experiments. The battle was fierce and bloody, the strike team pushing themselves to their limits as they fought against Zane's superhuman strength and speed. Yaris felt the sting of the commander's blows, his armor denting and cracking under the relentless assault. But in the end, it was the disruptor that turned the tide. Yaris managed to get close enough to activate the device, the pulse of energy staggering Zane long enough for Carter to deliver a final devastating blow. As Zane fell, Yaris felt a surge of triumph tempered by a profound sense of loss. The battle had been won, but at a terrible cost. Several members of the strike team lay dead or dying, their bodies broken and bloody on the desert sands. Among them was Tharos, a Kazon warrior who had been one of Yaris's closest friends and confidants. Yaris knelt beside his fallen comrade, his claws stained with the deep crimson of Kazon blood. You fought bravely, my friend. Yaris whispered, his voice thick with emotion. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. As the survivors gathered their wounded and prepared to depart, Yaris felt the weight of his responsibilities press down upon him. The Dominion's super-soldier program had been dealt a significant blow, but he knew that the war was far from over. Upon their return to Earth, Yaris and Carter were met with grim news. The Dominion, emboldened by the success of their super-soldier experiments, had accelerated their plans for conquest. Reports of Dominion fleets massing on the borders of UEA and Kazan space flooded in, each one more alarming than the last. In the face of this new threat, Yaris found himself grappling with doubt and uncertainty. The losses suffered on Zephyrus III weighed heavily upon him, a stark reminder of the terrible cost of war. But as he looked out over the gathered ranks of human and Kazon soldiers, united in their determination to defend their homes and their way of life, Yaris felt a flicker of hope ignite within him. They had come so far, forging bonds of friendship and alliance in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Now as the spectre of all-out war loomed on the horizon, Yaris knew that he would have to call upon every ounce of strength and courage he possessed, the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and he would not let his people or his new allies down. Yaris straightened his shoulders, his eyes gleaming with renewed purpose. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he would face them head-on, united with his human brothers and sisters in arms. Together they would stand against the darkness, a beacon of hope and defiance in the face of the Dominion's tyranny. As the spectre of war loomed on the horizon, Yaris and Carter threw themselves into the monumental task of preparing their forces for the coming conflict. They established a state-of-the-art training facility on Earth, a sprawling complex where human and Kazon soldiers alike could hone their skills and forge unbreakable bonds of camaraderie. Within the facility's walls, the air crackled with the energy of a thousand warriors. Their bodies and minds pushed to the limit as they underwent grueling combat simulations. Yaris, drawing upon his decades of experience as a Kazon general, worked closely with Carter to develop innovative tactics that played to the strengths of both species. 
They drilled their troops in the art of combined arms warfare, with human and Kazon soldiers learning to fight as one seamless unit. The humans, with their advanced technology and tactical expertise, provided long-range fire support and precision strikes, while the Kazon, with their raw strength and ferocity, excelled in close-quarters combat. As the soldiers trained, they also learned to understand and appreciate each other's cultures, breaking down the barriers of mistrust that had once divided them. Yaris watched with pride as his Kazon warriors shared meals and stories with their human counterparts, forging friendships that would endure the fires of war. In the facility's research labs, Michael and his team of scientists worked tirelessly to unravel the secrets of the Dominion's super-soldier technology. They subjected the captured Commander Zane to a battery of tests, probing the limits of his enhanced physiology. What they discovered was both frightening and exhilarating. The super-soldiers' enhancements, while granting them incredible strength and resilience, were also deeply flawed. The genetic modifications that had created them were unstable, causing rapid cellular degradation that would ultimately lead to a premature death. This is it, Michael breathed, his eyes alight with the thrill of discovery. This is the key to defeating them. Armed with this new knowledge, Yaris and Carter began to formulate a plan of attack. They would strike at the heart of the Dominion super-soldier program, targeting the facilities where the enhanced warriors were created and trained. But even as they laid their plans, the first shots of the war were already being fired. Across a dozen star systems, the human Kazon alliance clashed with the forces of the Dominion in a series of brutal engagements. Yaris and Carter led their troops from the front, their armor scorched and battered as they fought through the chaos of battle. They scored significant victories in the early days of the war, their combined tactics proving devastatingly effective against the Dominion's conventional forces. But the super-soldiers were another matter entirely. They tore through the Alliance's lines like a hurricane, their enhanced strength and speed making them all but unstoppable. Yaris watched in horror as his soldiers fell before the onslaught, their bodies broken and bleeding on the battlefield. The losses weighed heavily upon him, each death a fresh wound upon his soul. But he knew that he could not falter, not now, not when the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. And then, in a moment that would forever be seared into his memory, Yaris received the news that would shatter his world. Vectar, his trusted lieutenant and friend, had been assassinated by a group of Kazon rebels who opposed the alliance with the humans. The rebels, led by a charismatic warlord named Craxus, had seized control of a major Kazon weapons manufacturing facility and were threatening to unleash a devastating attack on Earth unless Yaris surrendered himself to stand trial for treason. Yaris felt as though the ground had been ripped out from under him. He was torn between his duty to the Alliance and his loyalty to his own people, between the oaths he had sworn and the bonds of friendship that had sustained him through the darkest of times. In that moment of crisis he turned to Carter, his brother-in-arms, his friend. The human captain looked him in the eye, his gaze unflinching. You're not alone in this, Yaris, Carter said, his voice steady and sure. We'll face this together, no matter what comes. Yaris nodded, drawing strength from the human's unwavering support. Together they began to formulate a daring plan to confront Craxus and the rebels, a plan that would put everything they had fought for on the line. Yaris and Carter exchanged a determined nod as they finalized their plan to confront the traitorous Craxus. They gathered their small strike team in the Odyssey's armory, hand-picking each member for their unique skills. Sergeant Raven, a grizzled human sniper, checked the scope on his rifle. His piercing blue eyes glinted with a cold focus that had made him a legend among the UEA's special forces. The Kazon twins, Zorn and Koth, sparred in the corner, their movements a blur of deadly precision. As experts in close-quarters combat, they would be invaluable in the tight confines of the rebel-held facility. Specialist Ava Patel, her dark hair pulled back in a tight bun, hunched over a console, her fingers flying across the holographic interface. I'll have their security systems cracked in no time, she said, flashing a confident grin. Carter, his face etched with grim determination, turned to Yaris. 
Are you ready for this, my friend? We're about to face the ghosts of your past. Yaris, his yellow eyes glinting beneath the harsh lights of the armory, nodded solemnly. I am ready, Gary. Together we will remind Craxus of what it truly means to be Kazon. The team boarded a stealth shuttle, its matte black hull blending seamlessly with the inky void of space. As they approached the weapons facility on the Kazon's third moon, they knew they would have to navigate treacherous terrain and evade Dominion patrols. Stay sharp, Yaris growled, his claws tightening around the grip of his plasma rifle. We're in enemy territory now. The shuttle set down in a narrow canyon a few clicks from the facility, its engines whining as it powered down. The team disembarked, their boots crunching on the rocky ground as they fanned out in a defensive formation. Zorn and Koth took point, their keen Kazon senses alert for any sign of trouble. Raven followed close behind, his rifle at the ready, while Patel and Carter brought up the rear, their eyes scanning the surrounding cliffs for hidden dangers. As they made their way towards the facility, a sudden burst of plasma fire erupted from a nearby ridge. Dominion patrol, Yaris shouted, diving for cover behind a boulder. The team reacted instantly, returning fire with a hail of energy bolts. Raven's rifle cracked and a Dominion soldier tumbled from the ridge, his armor smoking from a precise headshot. Zorn and Koth leaped into the fray, their vibroblades humming as they engaged the remaining soldiers in a deadly dance of steel and flesh. Carter and Yaris provided covering fire, their weapons spitting bolts of searing energy. Push forward, Carter yelled over the din of battle. We can't let them pin us down. The team advanced, their movements coordinated and fluid, each member relying on the other's strengths to overcome the obstacles in their path. They fought their way through the canyon, leaving a trail of smouldering Dominion corpses in their wake. As they neared the facility, Patel crouched beside a heavy blast door, her omni-tool glowing as she hacked into the rebels' security systems. I'm in, she said, her voice tense with concentration. Disabling alarms. Now. The door slid open with a hiss, revealing a dimly lit corridor beyond. Yaris and Carter took the lead, their weapons at the ready, as they made their way deeper into the facility. Raven, find a sniper's nest and provide overwatch, Carter ordered, his voice low and steady. Zorn, Koth, engage any rebel forces you encounter. Patel, work your magic on their systems. The team split up, each member moving with silent efficiency towards their assigned tasks. Yaris and Carter pressed on their footsteps echoing in the empty halls as they neared the central control room. Suddenly a deep, mocking voice filled the air. Yaris, my old friend, I knew you would come. Yaris stiffened, his eyes narrowing as he recognized the voice of Craxus. He and Carter exchanged a glance, steeling themselves for the confrontation to come. They burst into the control room, weapons leveled only to find Craxus waiting for them, a cruel smile playing across his scarred face. The rebel leader was flanked by a dozen heavily armed Kazon warriors, their eyes glinting with a fanatical loyalty. Craxus, Yaris growled, his voice dripping with contempt. You betray our people, our very way of life, and for what? Power? Control? Craxus laughed, a harsh grating sound that set Yaris's teeth on edge. You are a fool, Yaris. The Kazon way of life is a relic of the past. The Dominion is the future, and I intend to lead our people into a new era of strength and dominance. Carter stepped forward, his rifle aimed squarely at Craxus's chest. You're making a mistake, Craxus. The Dominion will never share power with the Kazon. They'll use you and discard you the moment you've outlived your usefulness. Craxus's eyes flashed with anger, and he raised his own weapon, a wicked-looking plasma scythe. Enough talk. Yaris, I challenge you to a duel, as is our tradition. Defeat me, and my warriors will stand down, fail, and your precious alliance will crumble. Yaris hesitated, the weight of the challenge hanging heavy in the air. He knew that Kazon tradition demanded single combat, but he also knew that Carter would never let him face this threat alone. I accept your challenge, Craxus. 
Yaris said, his voice steady and sure. But I will not fight alone. Captain Carter is my brother in arms, and we will face you together. Craxus sneered, his grip tightening on his weapon. So be it, prepare to die, traitors. With a roar of fury, Craxus lunged forward, his plasma scythe crackling with deadly energy. Yaris and Carter met his charge head on, their weapons clashing in a blinding flare of light and heat. The duel was fierce and brutal, a whirlwind of slashing blades and searing plasma. Craxus was a formidable opponent, his every blow fueled by a lifetime of rage and resentment. But Yaris and Carter fought as one, their movements perfectly synchronized, their trust in each other unbreakable. They parried and countered, their weapons a blur of motion as they pushed Craxus back step by step. In a desperate gambit, Craxus fainted left, then spun right, his scythe arcing towards Carter's unprotected flank. But Yaris was there, his plasma blade intercepting the blow with a shower of sparks. Carter pressed the advantage, his rifle butt slamming into Craxus's jaw with a sickening crunch. The rebel leader staggered, his weapon slipping from his grasp as he fell to his knees. Yaris stood over him, his blade poised at Craxus's throat. It's over, Craxus, yield and your warriors will be spared. But Craxus only laughed, a bitter, broken sound. You still don't understand, do you? I've already won. With a final defiant roar, Craxus surged to his feet, a hidden blade sliding from his gauntlet. He lunged at Yaris, his eyes blazing with madness and hate. Yaris twisted away from Craxus's surprise attack, the hidden blade missing his throat by a hair's breadth. He countered with a thundering blow from his plasma rifle, cracking Craxus's helmet and sending the rebel leader staggering back. Carter leapt into the fray, his movements a blur as he engaged Craxus in a deadly dance of whirling blades and crackling energy. The two warriors clashed in a flurry of sparks and snarls, their weapons flashing in the dim light of the control room. Yaris joined the fight, his plasma blade humming as he slashed at Craxus's unprotected flank. The rebel leader twisted away, his own weapon lashing out in a blinding arc that forced Yaris to duck and roll. Back and forth they fought, the air thick with the stench of ozone and scorched flesh. Craxus was a formidable opponent, his every move fueled by a lifetime of rage and resentment. But Yaris and Carter fought as one, their bond forged in the heat of battle and tempered by the strength of their friendship. In a desperate gambit, Craxus fainted left, then spun right, his blade slicing towards Carter's unprotected chest. The human captain tried to dodge, but the blow caught him square in the torso, the crackling energy blade burning through his armor like paper. Carter screamed in agony, his knees buckling as he collapsed to the floor. Yaris roared in fury, his vision going red as he launched himself at Craxus with a primal surge of rage. He rained down blows on the rebel leader, his plasma blade a blur of motion, as he hammered through Craxus's defences. Craxus staggered under the onslaught, his own weapon falling from his grasp as Yaris drove him back with relentless fury. With a final brutal strike, Yaris shattered Craxus's helmet, the jagged edges of the broken metal tearing into the rebel leader's face. Craxus howled in pain, his hands scrabbling at his ruined visage as he crumpled to the ground. Yaris stood over him, his chest heaving with exertion and rage. He raised his blade, ready to end the traitor's life, but a weak cough from behind him stopped him short. Yaris! Carter's voice was little more than a whisper, his face pale and drawn with pain. Don't, don't let hate consume you. We're better than that. Yaris hesitated, his blade hovering inches from Craxus's throat. He looked back at Carter, seeing the plea in his friend's eyes, and with a shuddering breath, he lowered his weapon. Surrender, Craxus, Yaris growled, his voice raw with emotion. It's over. Craxus glared up at him, hatred burning in his eyes, but he knew he was beaten. With a curt nod, he signaled his warriors to stand down. Yaris rushed to Carter's side, cradling his friend's head in his lap. The wound in Carter's chest was deep and ragged, the flesh around it blackened and scorched. Hold on, Gary. Yaris pleaded, his voice cracking with desperation. We'll get you to a medic, just hold on. But even as he spoke, he could feel the life draining from his friend's body. 
Carter's breathing grew shallow and laboured, his eyes flickering as he struggled to focus on Yaris's face. It's okay, Carter whispered, his hand reaching up to grip Yaris's arm. It's okay, we did it, we won. Yaris shook his head, hot tears spilling down his cheeks. No, no, you can't die, not now, not after everything we've been through. Carter smiled, a weak, trembling thing that tore at Yaris's heart. I'm proud of you, Yaris, proud to have fought beside you, proud to call you my friend. His eyes drifted closed, his hand going slack in Yaris's grip. Yaris let out a keening wail, a sound of pure anguish and grief that echoed through the facility. Around him, the rebel forces lay down their arms, their faces etched with shock and sorrow. Sergeant Raven, Zorn, Koth and Specialist Patel rushed into the control room, their weapons at the ready, only to stop short at the sight of Yaris cradling Carter's lifeless body. In the days that followed, Yaris worked tirelessly to secure the alliance between the Kazan and the humans. He addressed the Kazan people, his voice heavy with grief, but also with determination. Captain Gary Carter was a true hero, Yaris said, his eyes shimmering with unshed tears. He gave his life to protect not just his own people, but ours as well. We must honour his sacrifice by embracing the alliance he fought so hard to build. Only together can we hope to forge a better future for all our peoples. The Kazon, moved by Yaris's words and the weight of Carter's sacrifice, rallied behind their leader. They worked side by side with the humans to rebuild what had been lost, to heal the wounds of war and forge a new path forward. Yaris threw himself into his new role as a diplomat, travelling between Earth and Kazoria to strengthen the bonds between their peoples. He helped establish joint colonies, places where humans and Kazan could live and work together, learning from each other's cultures and building a shared future. It wasn't easy. There were setbacks and challenges, old prejudices and new fears to overcome, but Yaris never wavered in his commitment to peace, to the dream of a galaxy where all species could coexist in harmony. And always, he carried the memory of Gary Carter with him, a constant reminder of the price of war and the power of friendship. He knew that there would be more battles to come, more sacrifices to be made. But he also knew that as long as there were those willing to stand together against the darkness, there was hope for a better tomorrow. Years later, Yaris stood before a towering memorial, its gleaming surface etched with the names of the fallen. At its centre, a statue of Captain Gary Carter stood tall and proud, his face a study in courage and determination. Yaris placed his hand on the cold stone, his fingers tracing the letters of his friend's name. I miss you, Gary, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. Every day. But I promise you, I won't let your sacrifice be in vain. I'll keep fighting for the future we dreamed of, no matter how long it takes. He stepped back, his eyes fixed on the statue's face. For a moment he could almost see Carter standing there, a small smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Yaris smiled back, a bittersweet expression that spoke of loss and hope intertwined. He knew that the road ahead would be long and hard, that there would be more battles to fight and more losses to endure. But he also knew that he wouldn't have to face them alone. He had his people, his allies, and the memory of a friend who had taught him the true meaning of courage and sacrifice. With a final nod to the statue, Yaris turned and walked away, his steps heavy but his heart light. The future was waiting, and he had a promise to keep. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.